Hey everybody, today I would just like to say that our group is presenting the Canadian Tundra. First things first, the Canadian Tundra is a subpolar region, which means two main things. One, it's really cold. For northern summers, the temperature averages around negative 1.5 degrees Celsius, while for southern summers, the temperature averages around 2 degrees Celsius, a little bit warmer. However, during the winters, it can reach a blistering negative 32 degrees Celsius in the north and negative 23 degrees Celsius in the south. However, not only are subpolar regions cold, they are also really dry, usually only receiving about 100 millimeters to 200 millimeters of precipitation annually. To put that value in perspective, we are in a drought and we are currently receiving 350 millimeters of precipitation annually. But why is this? To approach this in a more visual approach, let's say we have the Earth, and here we have the Sun. Also, here's the Sun rays. And by the way, this diagram is not to scale. Additionally, the Earth's equator is here. So those small circles on Earth just represent the area that the sunlight hits. Since the Earth is a lot more flat near the poles compared to the equator, the poles get a much more spread out light that is a lot more dispersed. Also, I would like to note that since the ice poles have more ice, a lot of the sunlight is just reflected out once it hits the ice. This is one reason why the poles are so cold. Another reason is because of convection currents. Let's say that we have the atmosphere. Near the middle is a cold, low pressure zone, while to the left and the right are high pressure, hot areas. Now, because the cool air sinks, the warm air rises, and the air tends to move from areas with high pressure to low pressure, the atmosphere would have a convection current like this. The cold, low pressure air is the Canadian tundra, and since it's so cold, the water cycle is slower, mostly because there's less evaporation. As a result, there would be less precipitation. Now we know the conditions of the area, let's learn about the animals that inhabit this frigid, dry land. You may think that animals probably could not adapt to such harsh conditions, there are some. Here are some organisms that live in this area. But how? It has to do with their adaptations, and to understand that, we are going to need to understand these animals' basic needs, which are shelter, insulation, water, and food. Food can be obtained from the sea, by fish, or plankton, and while you might say that because of a slow water cycle, it might be hard to find fresh water. Well, a slow water cycle also reduces evaporation, which can leave large deposits of water. So those two are crossed off the list. The two main needs are shelter and insulation in this area. For insulation, animals usually have thick, warm feathers and fur that cover their body. Also, they have larger bodies and shorter arms, legs, and tails. All of these traits help animals conserve their heat. Finally, for shelter, usually they just bury themselves underground. For example, polar bears, when they hibernate, burrow the parts of their body underground, while insects stay in the depths, allowing them to have good shelter. Today, the climate change likely caused by humans is depleting the ice sheets, making animals who have adapted to these harsh conditions for thousands and even millions of years endangered. If you want to save these animals, we have to find a solution to the problem, and fast.